Shalom Yasharala, this is Jessica. And today I want to do a video to talk to you about how to submit to God or Ahaya is his name. So how to submit to Ahaya. And the reason I want to do this is because we have been talking about the flea doctrine here and that can be a very intimidating, terrifying doctrine or just, you know, thing to talk about. And so I don't want it to seem like, you know, I'm focusing on doom and gloom. So what I want to do right now is talk to you again about how to submit to Ahaya. Because in order to hear what Ahaya is saying to you, especially when it comes to doctrine, it is really important to submit to him when it comes to how to battle in the spirit, how to get through life. It's so important to understand you have to submit to Ahaya. Okay, so before I get started, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Ahaya Ashara Ahaya Bahashem Yeshaya Wakodesh Wak. And that is Ahaya, our Heavenly Father. That is his name. I am that I am. In the name of Yeshaya, his son. Some people might call him J S U S, <laughs> right? And then also the Holy Spirit. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and get into this. We're talking about how to submit to Ahaya. And just to give you a little bit of background, I won't give like a testimony, but really what spawned this, you know, over the past couple of years, since I've been really keeping the commandments, you know, it's it's been beautiful. It's been great. But really here in this last like nine, 10 months, that's when it really starts to get busy. Okay. Um, so I really started diving into the flea doctrine back in May of 2023. And once I was like, okay, it that that's what it is. Like Ahaya is very clear about this. That's when Hashatan started to really, really like go to battle with me. Okay. And so that's when I had to really start to understand more about spiritual warfare and how I could press in, how I could really, you know, be on a highest good side. Yes, the commandments, you have to keep the commandments. That, that is your protection. There's also another added layer to this, which is what we're going to talk about. And that is fasting and prayer. Okay. And also meditating on scriptures. So I'm going to share with you some scriptures that prove that, you know, and I'm going to be honest, I saw this one brother's video. I don't know who it is, so I'm not sharing his video, <laughs> but because I instantly clicked off once he said this, he said, you don't have to fast as long as you're keeping the commandments, you're all good. And once I heard that, I was like, that's anti, that's anti Christ or anti Mashiach. Okay. Because the Messiah has made it very clear. We're going to have to fast. Okay. And so, you know, that's something to look out for if you're looking for a teacher is, are they teaching you to fast? Okay. So I think that's really important, you know, and I, I used to, when my mom would say like, you know, can you fast with me or something like that? I didn't really understand it. I knew we were supposed to fast, but my flesh was just too weak. And it was once Hashatan, Hashatan once he started really like going to battle with me even more intensely that's when I had to really press in with spiritual warfare, okay? So fasting, prayer, and meditating on the scriptures. Now, some precepts to prove that are Matthew 17, 21, where Yeshaya, he said, How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayers and fasting, okay? And that's also in a couple other books. And so he is telling the disciples you had to, you have to fast in order to get certain spirits out. The disciples were trying to cast out a spirit, a demonic spirit out of someone, out of a little boy, and they couldn't do it. And then Yeshaya could do it. And he explained to them, you know, there's just certain spirits, you have to fast them out. And that's real. It's so powerful what happens when, when you build your spirit up and you suppress your flesh. Okay, that's a good way to put it suppress your flesh and build your spirit up. Another good one for fasting is Mark 
chapter 2, verse 18. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? So people were wondering, like, why, why are your disciples not fasting? Because in the Old Testament and the Apocrypha, we used to fast a lot. That I mean, that's what we do when we need you know, to draw near to Ahia, when we need Ahia to come through for us and, you know, afflict the heathens, that's what we do. When we need him to redeem us, we fast and we pray and it is powerful. So here they're just wondering, they're like, so why aren't your disciples fasting? <laughs> and Yeshaya said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days, okay? And so those are these days. Our bridegroom, Yeshaya, he is in the heavens, right? Now it is time for us to fast. So let's talk about prayer now. Prayer is a very big one. It's not just okay to just fast or else that's pretty much just a diet, right? That's, <laughs> it's just vanity at that point. So it really is important to press in and pray as well. And so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 or 17 says, pray without ceasing. And that means pray constantly. I mean, like, it really is that simple. Pray all day. Just pray, okay? So <laughs> especially if you're a woman, um, the Bible is very clear, in my opinion, about making sure that you have a physical head covering on. And so, you know, one thing that I find very helpful is just wear your hair covered, period, so that you don't have to, because one thing that's super obnoxious for me is when I really want to talk to a Haya and then I'm like, oh, dang, my hair's not covered. Like I, I, I can't say anything or I got to go get a head wrap, right? So it's just like, no, miss me with all that. Just keep your head covered, especially if you're going out and about in these streets. Keep your head covered. I promise you it is protection, okay? People are not trying to holler at you <laughs> if you have your head covered, okay? So lastly, let's talk about meditating on scriptures. And what's, oh, what I mean about that is Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of Ahiah, and in his, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Day and night. That means that we're keeping the law in our minds at all times. And it doesn't have to be difficult. It's not arduous. It really is simple. And once I started to do this, I was like, there's so much peace that comes from just meditating on the scriptures. Okay. So the scriptures, I really meditated on a lot when I was really just, you know, submitting to a high end saying, you know, I, I surrender. I surrender to what you have for me, Ahia. I surrender to your will, you know, and it helped me to count it all joy, all the affliction that's happening. It allowed me to see this is for a reason. You're purging me. And those are some other precepts I could have added in, in here. Um, but, you know, I would encourage you to check out those scriptures for yourself, um, such as, you know, he's purging things out of us. He's purifying us, right? We're like gold and he's making us into an actual pure gold, right? And so in order to do that, you have to heat up gold very, very high temperatures and it helps to separate the impurities, right? So that is, that's biblical. That's in scripture and it's science, right? That's what Ahia is doing to us. And so the affliction, it does that. The affliction brings you near to a higher. It is so powerful. And that's why I'm saying I have to count it all joy. So I'm so grateful for a higher and for spiritual warfare because it allows you to surrender to a higher. So some of the scriptures that I meditate on um, a lot would be Philippians 4 and 13. I think we all know this. I can do all things through Yeshua HaMashiach, who strengthens me, okay? Or your Bible would say J-E-S-U-S, -S, right? But, you know, use whatever 
word that you want to use for his name until Ahaya shows you otherwise, okay? So we can do all things through our Messiah who strengthens us. I just keep that in my mind. Like, I'm telling you, if I'm just like, oh my goodness, I can't stand this. I'm, you know, oh, when is this going to end? Right? I just have to say, okay, you know what? You can do all things. I even made a little song out of it and maybe I'll sing it one day. I don't know. I'm a little shy about that. But, you know, you get the point. Just keep it in your mind, okay? And repeat it to yourself. Say it out loud. Let Hashatan hear you speak. You say, you say, I can do all things through Yesha HaMashiach that strengthens me, right? Okay, so the next one would be um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, where it says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. That one is huge for me. That one's a very important one. Um, I need to come with another synonym for huge because I do say that in every video. <laughs> but I mean, that one is monumental. It's transformative. Okay, there we go. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And that one's really important because it allows you to see this is a faith walk. This is not about what you see. And when I was out in the world and I was doing all the, you know, occult stuff, we were really big into that, into, you know, you take steps based off of off of faith. We didn't call it faith, I don't think. It was pretty much just, you know, you just trust the universe, right? That's really what I was big into. So it's like, okay, well, now that you're under the protection of Ahaya, Come on now, there's no excuse. The Bible even says it, right? Which is where the world, they twist scripture, they take scripture and they use it for their themselves. This is real. Walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, okay? And it can be scary. Yes, but you have to remember who you serve and you serve Ahaya and we know Ahaya wins in the end, Okay. Praise Ahaya Bahashem Yeshaya. So the last one that I really meditated on a lot um, is Zechariah 4 and 6. This one really, for me, I mean, I was even like on YouTube, like just Googling and try to figure out who out there is teaching on this. And I found this really good song that this woman sings and I will link it. Uh, I'll put it in the description because this song for me, it just, I mean, it really helped me like understand the power of Ahaya. Okay. So this scripture says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit saith Elohim, right? So this is saying, this isn't our own might. This isn't the human might. This isn't the human power. This is Ahaya, our Elohim, right? He's our power. He is the one that is doing everything. He is the one that is you know, moving chess pieces here and, you know, he, he does it all. So we don't have to push. The only thing we need to do is fast and pray. Keep these commandments. Okay. Praise Ahaya. <laughs> so uh, before I sign off, I just want to share with you just some extra scriptures that you can really meditate on. Um, maybe these will resonate with you, right? We all have to find the scriptures that resonate for us or with us, okay? So one of them would be Psalm 56, chapter 56 and verse three. What time I am afraid I will trust in thee, okay? And so, you know, David, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, Psalms, reading the Psalms when you're going through spiritual warfare is key because David was going through it, right? Like he really was going through through it. People were trying to kill him. Um, Saul was trying to kill him. People were jealous, right? It just was a lot going on. And so David's Psalms are extremely powerful and peaceful and just, you know, allow you to remember my forefathers and foremothers, they went through this and they endured. And this is all about enduring. Okay. We must have endurance. We must endure. Okay, especially if we're going to get the kingdom, you got to surrender, submit to a highest so you can endure. Praise a highest. Okay, so that was Psalm 56 3. Um, the other one is 56 11. And so that one says, In a higher have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. That one is so key because 
when you put your trust in Ahia, that is you surrendering to him. That's you submitting to his will, submitting to his authority. You're saying, I don't care what man is doing, what they're saying, what they're projecting, the fiery darts. You trust Ahia, okay? Praise Ahia. So that one's a really good one. That's Psalm 56, 11, okay? Um, another one I really like is Proverbs 30 and verse 5. Every word of Ahia is pure. He is a shield. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Okay. And so when you surrender to someone, and I'm not going to say someone, when you surrender to Ahia, when you surrender to Ahia, right? Because some people will, they will surrender or submit to anything right? Because if you're not going to serve a Haya, then you're going to serve something. Okay. So I want to make that clear. We're talking about when you surrender to a Haya, but just think about things in your life that you surrendered to that weren't the most high, right? You surrendered to them. You had trust in that. Maybe you didn't though. <laughs> but in this situation, what um, Proverbs 30 verse five is saying is that a Haya's word is pure. Okay. Which means it has no ill intent for you. It's not going to harm you. It's going to protect you. It's a shield for you. Praise Ahia. Okay. And that's the key. You must trust in him. We must trust in him because the fearful do not inherit the kingdom. All right. So just a couple more. This is Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Ahia is not a man that he should lie. And you really can just stop right there. Like, you don't have to keep going, but if you want, it's neither the son of man that he should repent, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Okay, so that's real. And I just repeat that to myself a lot. Ahia is not a man that he should lie, because that means that everything that is in his word will come to pass. You can trust in Ahia. You can surrender to Ahia. Let's do Psalm 37 and verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Most High, Ahia. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Again, it's all about the trust. That is how you surrender and submit to Ahia. You must trust in him. And the last one, everybody knows this one. I would believe, I think. It's a classic, and of course it must be included. And that is Psalm 91 and verse 2. That says, I will say of the most high Ahia, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Alahayim or my power in him will I trust. Praise Ahia. So I pray that this is edifying for you, that it gives you something to think about, that it gives you scriptures that you can meditate on. May you find your own scriptures as well. This will help you to press in to endure. We must be fasting. We must be praying and meditating on scriptures at all times, especially in these last days. That way, it's not going to be scary for you. You know that Ahia wins in the end. He has a remnant, okay? And we must do his will, keep his commandments and the faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah, in order to be counted worthy. Praise Ahia. I love you all. And I'm praying for Yasharala constantly. Okay. So I pray that you're doing well. And I pray to be back here soon. Ahia willing to give you more content. So I give all praise, glory, and honor to Ahia Ashara Ahia Bahashim Yeshaya Wa Kodesh Selah.